Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Scott Silverman. I'm co-founder of Commerce Next. We're a community event series and conference for marketers at retail and D2C brands. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in and making time to join us live or listen to the replay if, uh, if that's how you're listening to us. Uh, and of course, we all hope you're continuing to stay healthy and safe and a special uh, uh, kind of message for our uh, West Coast listeners and hope you're all safe uh, with all of the, uh, the fires that are going on. On behalf of my co-founders, Veronica Sunsev and Alan Dick, I wanna welcome you um, to what is our 19th Commerce Next webinar. Uh, and the topic for today is winning the 2020 holiday inbox battle. So we are expecting holiday 2020 to be the most competitive and, and certainly the most uh, different uh, holiday that we've experienced uh, than, than compared to any other time. And today we really wanna help our community learn how to cut through the clutter with their customer, customer marketing. Uh, as always, we welcome your involvement uh, in terms of asking questions. We'll be doing some live polling a little bit. Um, so feel free to load those up uh, and I'll show you in a little bit about where you can do that. So I wanna start with a uh, couple important uh, thank yous. Uh, first to our speakers today, uh, we have Scott Clark, Head of Digital Marketing and Alex and Annie, Liesel Walsh, for, uh, VP, uh, formerly VP CRM Loyalty and Customer Insights of Party City, and Karen DiClemente, who's uh, Senior Strategy Director at ListTrack. Uh, we know how busy all of you are, especially this time of year. So thank you so much for uh, being with us and sharing your insights with the community. Um, we uh, are going to be sending you all a gift. Uh, and uh, attendees are also five lucky attendees. If you're listening live, sorry, replay uh, people. Uh, we will be sending you a gift as well. Um, and this is uh, thanks to our gifting partner, Loop Commerce. So, uh, wanted to jump into our agenda for the day. Um, a couple, wanted to just announce a couple upcoming events. Uh, there's some housekeeping. Uh, Karen is going to give a presentation uh, about how to win the holiday inbox. Uh, we have some audience polls, and then we'll get into a panel discussion with our speakers for today. Uh, so coming up next week, uh, we're really excited. We have a session, a, a webinar next Wednesday, the 23rd, e-commerce strategies to tackle all, uh, the holiday shipping challenges, which we're hearing a lot about. We have been uh, very busy doing some research, which you may have seen some of that, both on the consumer and the retailer side. And so we're excited to share with that uh, what we learned, uh, some of the trends, and we have a great lineup of speakers, including uh, Emily Kalp, CEO of Cover FX, and Scott Lux from uh, Theory and Helmet Lang. And we have our holiday optimization summit that was on Wednesday, October 7th from 1 to 4.30 Eastern. Uh, we have around nine different sessions. Uh, there'll be some speaker, speaker Q&A. Uh, we have some great speakers from companies like Stella and Dot, Bombas, Beta Brand, Rue 21, Foot Locker, and others. So please uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, you can see the uh, bit.ly slash CN holiday if you wanna go ahead and register for that. Registration is open. So a couple housekeeping notes. Uh, don't worry if you miss anything, we're recording. Uh, you can kind of get everything on the uh, replay. And uh, wanted to show you a couple of things where, uh, so you know how to navigate around during the webinar. Uh, the first is uh, just to draw your attention to the upper right, where your, you know, your console, uh, where you can control Q&A and see polls and download handouts. Uh, everything is over in that area. Um, if you wanna ask a question, uh, you click on that Q&A and then ask your question in the bottom. And uh, once you ask questions, you can upvote them. Uh, you can upvote your own if you like, or you can upvote other questions. Uh, that'll help prioritize and kind of make them rise to the top so we can uh, make sure to uh, focus on the questions that are most popular. And uh, you can download the handouts, both the presentation and there's a useful um, holiday marketing guide from ListTrack that's in the handouts as well. And I think Karen's gonna mention that in a moment when she's going through her presentation. Uh, again, that's uh, in that upper handout. If you click on uh, handouts, you'll see that there. 
And then if you're listening to the replay and you want to uh, see those handouts um, or see the live poll results, uh, there's that little square rectangular thing on the bottom there that's circled. Um, click on that. So uh, with that, I am excited to uh, have Karen DiClemente from ListTrack join and um, kind of get us started with some thoughts on holiday marketing and how to win the inbox. Great. Thanks, Scott. Super happy to be here and be part of the Commerce Next community. As Scott mentioned today, uh, we'll be chatting about all things holiday and, and tips and tricks uh, and strategies to make you guys all successful during the holiday season. As Scott mentioned uh, earlier, the uh, slides that I'll be presenting today are available to download as handouts, as well as this track's holiday guide, uh, which has many more strategies and suggestions for a successful holiday season. All right. So first, for those of you who don't know who uh, who Listrack is or who we are, uh, we are a best-in-class cross-channel digital marketing platform uh, with a singular focus on retail. We have over a thousand retailers and brands as clients, and we consistently add over 150 new retailers each year. We are extremely proud of our industry-leading net promoter score of 80, as well as our continuous innovation really driven through the, the clients, the retailers, and, and the brands that we have. So enough about the track. Uh, let's dive into the holiday season. So September, uh, here we are. It is September uh, 16th. Hard to, <laughs> hard to believe that we are here already. And um, you know, I was just reading yesterday, Deloitte uh, released some numbers that this holiday season e-commerce sales are projected to grow, you know, 25 to 35% over last holiday. Uh, to put that in perspective, last holiday season, uh, Deloitte mentioned grew about 14% over the previous year. So needless to say, we are expecting extremely high volume uh, happening during uh, this holiday season. And it it's already starting to happen. Um, one of the things that I will you know, say that, and I hate to use the word unprecedented, uh, but one of the things that we have noticed is that many of our mid-market uh, retailers have already started their code freezes, which we have never seen before. You know, normally those types of things start to happen uh, you know, mid to end of October, early November, uh, but we are seeing uh, more retailers now more than ever, uh, preparing for the holiday and starting their holiday season sooner. So let's dive into what we should be uh, focusing on. So first and foremost, um, acquisition acquisition uh, should always be a focus of ours, but now more than ever, it's uh, really time to optimize those acquisition strategies and acquisition points uh, that are driving highest customer lifetime value and that are most successful at converting. And uh, in these examples here, whether it's email or SMS, building your, your mobile audience or building your email audience, you can see retailers have already started doing this. So in this example, in these examples, uh, Kendra Scott is encouraging folks to sign up to get early access to Black Friday uh, deals uh, Villa or, or DTLR is also using SMS to promote their holiday uh, incentives and strategies. I've already, uh, I went through my inbox this morning to look at how many holiday emails I have received already. Uh, and it was over 100, uh, you know, uh, Uncommon Goods, which is a great client of ours, uh, started their holiday uh uh, content on September 7th around gift giving. Anthropology started yesterday around the pre-holiday shop. So it's definitely not too early uh, to start. Next, we all want to have the largest, you know, active file or audience size that we possibly can have during fourth quarter. Uh, but it's also really important to plan uh, with in uh, with or alongside, sorry, with deliverability risks. So if you haven't already been sending to your largest possible audience, now is the time to start warming up those potential inactive um, email addresses that you have on your list. And 
you know, it's really important to do that now because you really don't want uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday to come around. And that is the day that you decide to send to your largest list size. Uh, in terms of email volume, we always hear concerns of, am I sending too many emails? What is, you know, too much in terms of frequency? And what I will say is when the pandemic started, in you know April of this year, we started seeing email volumes equivalent to Black Friday and Cyber Monday volumes last year. And I can also tell you that unsubscribe rates have not increased. We have not seen significant decreases in open or click to open rates. And so consumers are you know really more, uh, I think, engaged with email right now, probably more than they have been in the past because they're at home. Uh, they're checking their personal email more frequently. And I think it's important to make sure that you uh, balance your you know, holiday planning and your uh, list sizes and you know, segment sizes accordingly. Work with your deliverability team now, get those IPs warmed up, make sure you have a, a great reputation before heading into the holiday season. All right, so let's talk about October. Uh, October, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening. Uh, one of them is Amazon, uh, well, potentially Amazon Prime Day in October. And so we know that uh, folks are going to start shopping uh, earlier than, than ever in uh, this holiday season. So during the month of October, it's important to uh, you know, optimize your personalization and segmentation strategies. So identify those core audiences on your list and how you want to speak to them through the holiday season. There are typically four uh, key segments we look at. Uh, so active buyers, inactive uh, non-buyers, active non-buyers, and inactive buyers. And these four segments, you want to think about uh, your personalization strategy, your frequency strategy, content strategy, um, you know, utilizing dynamic content um, with different offers for each of these audiences, tweaking the personalization algorithms for each of these audiences, you know, pre-build them, plan your calendar and cadence accordingly uh, so that there aren't any uh, surprises when uh, the holiday season arrives. Re-engagement. So I talked a little bit about deliverability. Uh, now is the time to run those re-engagement campaigns. One of the audiences that we always recommend looking at now um, are those subscribers on your list who purchased last holiday season, you know, you know, somewhere from October through end of December, but may not have recently opened or engaged with you. So there, there's likely a segment on your list that have purchased from you in the past uh, because they are gift givers. And so now is the time to start including them into your active file mailings and start warming up those subscribers and getting them used to receiving emails from you. Along with your inactive, uh, general kind of inactive folks, you know, folks that haven't opened within a certain amount of time or subscribed within a certain amount of time, they likely haven't received emails from you recently. Now's the time to start running those re-engagement campaigns, obviously balancing with your deliverability risks, make sure that you have, again, the largest possible audience. All right, so we are uh, in November. Uh, it's going to come very much sooner than we think. And, and November is going to be a very busy month for us all. And one of the, the, the biggest takeaways that I've heard is that retailers are really going to want to discourage those crowded shopping environments this year, right? So many of the, the big name retailers that we know have closed their stores on Thanksgiving day. And so as a, you know, as e-commerce becomes the main channel to purchase this holiday season, you know, there are a few things that you may want to keep in mind. Number one is perhaps offering online only deals. You know, normally I, I probably wouldn't recommend having a different pricing strategy for your products online versus in stores. Uh, but those online only deals could persuade your consumers to shop online rather than, um, you know, leaving their house and going to a crowded, crowded shopping environment. Uh, second is perhaps allowing uh, consumers to pick their own Black Friday. So we see Nordstrom doing this with their loyalty uh, program and, the, and their points. Um, I think this could be a really impactful 
uh, opportunity for consumers. Uh, if you have a loyalty program, whether you're offering additional points or dollar value or you know the best discount, you know, give your consumers the option to choose the day that they want to shop uh, with your best discount from you. Again, helping to alleviate some of the, the crowded store environments and you know maybe spread out some of that that holiday uh, holiday traffic. And then my final thought around November is potentially incentivizing uh, slower shipping timelines. So uh, you know I see retailers doing this now, the biggest one being Amazon, like, hey, if you don't need this tomorrow, uh, you know, you know, save a couple of bucks and we'll get it to you within five days. And so I think consumers would be uh, encouraged to shop earlier if they knew they could get a discount for a slower shipping timeline, like five or, or five or 10 days. It may help ease up some of the, you know, supply chain and logistics issues that we're anticipating during this, uh, during this quarter. Uh, finally, in November, I think it's really important, you know, the economy contracted at about 32% during the pandemic. So we know that there are many people who have lost their jobs or who have um, been furloughed from their, from their employers. And uh, giving your consumers payment options, I think, is going to be more important now than ever, because many of these consumers will still want to give a great gift. So whether it's it's Klarna or Afterpay or Affirm, uh, starting to promote those payment options, you know, really now or advertising um, that opportunity will encourage consumers to, you know, start purchasing early and, and uh, giving them different payment options for the holiday season. Uh, lastly, uh, this is in, uh, you know, December's, uh, or no, I'm sorry, November's uh, timeline. But if you haven't started thinking about holiday email creative, now is the time to do so. So making sure you have dynamic content related to all of your shipping deadlines and pieces of content to drop into your creative is really important. Updating your uh, navigational elements to uh, drive your consumers to holiday gift giving. Um, or other categories on your site which you are promoting. Um, make sure you have those designs finalized sooner rather than later and ready to implement, um, you know, come, you know, mid to end October, early November. And finally, uh, you know, December, this is really, uh, you know, last minute gift giving. Shipping deadlines are incredibly important uh, during the month of December. And so make sure you take advantage of every opportunity to remind your consumers when, you know, last day for free ground shipping, last day for overnight shipping um, is going to be happening. This is also when you want to start promoting any sort of last minute gift giving opportunities. So uh, e-gift cards, uh, things like that, you know, make it easy for your uh, customers to buy last minute gifts for their loved ones and get them delivered in time for the holidays. Also uh, promoting any, um, you know, gift wrap services that you have and any additional uh, timelines that those gift wrapping services will take uh, should someone choose to, to take advantage of that. And so, you know, really, um, you know, the in short, holiday is going to start sooner than ever this year. Um, and my biggest you know, recommendation is if you haven't started planning uh, for the season, uh, now, today is the time to do that. And if you've got you know, technology or, or implementation or integration projects for your website still outstanding, make sure to get those completed as soon as possible. Uh, consumers are already starting to think about holiday and shop uh, for the holiday season, which um, is really unlike other. Um, and then finally, we want to think about those purchasers or non-purchasers after the holiday season. So there's really two big groups of opportunity I see um, after the holiday season. The first is uh, the number of folks that have signed up for your email list or your SMS uh, campaigns, but didn't make a purchase during holiday season. They were interested, they showed intent. Um, how do you keep them um, engaged and how do you get them to convert after the holiday season? And so 
uh, you know, one of those things could be updating your triggered campaigns now so that you're giving non-purchasers or first-time buyers potentially uh, an offer earlier in the series for your browse or cart messaging, um, setting up, you know, recurring SMS messages to those non-buyers to remind them of a potential welcome offer that they have. And then for those first time buyers that did purchase during the holiday season, uh, you know, you want to keep them engaged. You want to turn them into loyal customers. And uh, I would also recommend looking at all of your post purchase uh, campaigns and flows that you have set up. So thank you messages, loyalty messages, review requests, emails, you know, cross sell, upsell messages incentives for a second or repeat purchase, you know, make sure you have those campaigns in place uh, now uh, so that you can take advantage of uh, converting those first time buyers and second time buyers after, um, after the holiday season. And so with that, I will turn it back over to Scott uh, for our uh, panel questions. Thanks, uh, Karen. That was a, a really nice overview. I liked how you kind of walked us through like a calendar view, kind of thinking about all the things you need to do over the next few months uh, to kind of get ready for or finish getting ready and 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 actually executing during the holiday season. So uh, the next thing we're going to do, we have a couple uh, questions we want to ask our audience before we get into the panel discussion, kind of hear what the state of mind is of everybody that's listening in today. Um, and I went through this a little bit, but uh, the questions that come up on your screen and then you can use that area on the upper right in your console to uh, look at open or closed uh, surveys and, and see what the results are. Karen was talking a lot about retailers uh, eager to get things started earlier. Think about this from the consumer's perspective. When does the customer believe that the 2020 online holiday shopping season has started. So beginning with uh, the first half of October, second half of October, uh, the more traditional first half of November, even more traditional like Cyber Week and so on, second half of November. So think about this from the customer point of view. The majority of folks think uh, it's gonna be happening in the second half of October. Um, which I think is a little bit earlier than normal. I would have expected more of the first half of November, but, uh, and some folks are even about uh, 38%, a third, more than a third of you are, uh, feel like it's gonna be the first half of October. So it'd be great if uh, we can see those shoppers actually uh, begin to do something like that. So um, next question. So there's a lot of uncertainty around shipping. And uh, this is a question of, do you have a, a plan to communicate fulfillment expectations or when things aren't meeting expectations with customers? So yes, no, not yet, but working on it. About 43% uh, not yet, but working on it. And 3% of you need to get busy. Um, you have not uh, come up with this plan. There's usually uh, a second peak for uh, for holiday shopping that comes in mid-December, uh, as people may have been waiting a little bit or they, you know, it's more traditional for them. So the question here is, um, you know, what are your expectations for that second uh, e-commerce peak uh, in mid-December? Um, it won't happen. Uh, it, it's going to be the same as in past years. It's going to be smaller than in past years, or it's going to be bigger than in past years. So um, again, uh, we're talking about what's gonna happen with this uh, second e-commerce shopping peak that usually happens in mid-December. And um, wow, uh, so uh, the most popular answer here is it's gonna be bigger than in past years, which is interesting because people can't go into stores. Um, we'll see what, if that plays out or not. Um, second most popular is it'll be smaller than in past years. Um, so I'm going to close this poll. And again, if you go into that closed poll, you can go and, and read that data. Um, and then uh, the last question, which really tees up uh, our uh, discussion in our webinar next week. I'm going to start this one. Do you think it's possible to motivate consumers to shop earlier in order to avoid the shipping crisis? And Karen referenced 
uh, campaigns to do that or things like pick your own Black Friday, which could be picking it earlier. So, um, you know, can you uh, have an impact on customers and encourage them and get them to actually move up their shopping and do it earlier? So either yes, you definitely can, uh, maybe slightly or no, it's really hard to change consumer habits. Uh, so uh, fairly optimistic group here, uh, around a little more than 50% think possibly, but only slightly, um, and a little more than a third uh, believe, yes, definitely, you can motivate consumers. Uh, and then a uh, small group or just around 10% believe that uh, it's really hard to change consumer habits. Um, so uh, with that, I want to ask our panelists to turn their cameras and mics on and um, and let's get into a little bit of a conversation with uh, with Scott and Liesl joining myself and Karen. And I'll turn my camera on as well. All right. Well, uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, for our webinar on holiday uh, customer marketing. Um, Scott, I want to start with you. If you could please introduce yourself uh, briefly and um, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, help us understand who is Alex and Ani, for those who may not be familiar with you. Uh, and then, you know, help the audience understand what's holiday like for Alex and Ani in terms of your approach to marketing to existing customers. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Scott. Uh, my name is Scott Clark. I've been with Alex and Ani for a little over two years. Uh, for those of you who don't know Alex and Ani, Alex and Ani is a meaning based jewelry brand. Uh, our core assortment includes bracelets, necklaces, earrings that are handcrafted to honor moments and connections to the people in our lives. Uh, we have heartfelt gifts from birthstones to powerful symbols of love to cool collections like Harry Potter and, and, and Wonder Woman. So uh, a little bit about uh, uh, Alex and Ani and uh, just a peek. We do have some really cool collections coming up, so you'll have to check that out for the holiday season. Um, holiday for us, uh, I, I love the, uh, the poll questions and seeing the answers because there, there were a few of those poll questions that... Uh, that I was in line with, and then there was a few of them that I was part of the, uh, the smaller percentages of. And uh, I think there's uh, how we are approaching holiday is we definitely have a plan, uh, but with that plan comes another plan. And we, we know that flexibility is going to be a key part uh, to, to winning a holiday this year. Um, we, we've discussed shipping, we've discussed engaging our lapsed in, and re-engaging our current customers. We, we, we feel that that's going to be a, a vital piece of that. Uh, but there's also understanding the comp competitive landscape uh, that is going to be a, hard, a, a large piece of it. Uh, understanding that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, the, the shipping the delivery as we look at uh, when those cutoffs are going, going to be, uh, how are we going to make that a sense of urgency without uh, turning people off? And so uh, it's a plan, but also understanding that there's going to be flexibility in that. So Lisa, um wanted to have you introduce yourself and um, and, and I mean, you're a veteran of, of many online holiday seasons and, uh, and you've been managing uh, customer marketing through a pandemic. So you have, you know, that point of view as well. Um, you know, what are like two or three guiding principles um, you would recommend to our audience uh, when it comes to customer marketing for this unique 2020 holiday season? Sure. So um, one of the interesting things about Party City is that there are a lot of holidays that we've already gone through that were um, almost as big as our biggest holiday, which is actually Halloween. Um, so so we had the experience of, 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 of trying to manage with the customer how to celebrate the kinds of holidays they had and in the circumstances they were in. And um, I think the two biggest um, principles for me coming out of that experience was, is, you know, and Scott said it as well, like 
absolutely be flexible. So you've got to be ready to hear what the customer is experiencing and what they want and, and find a way to make yourself relevant. And sometimes that happens, you know, over a period of days where things are shifting very quickly and you have to adjust your messaging or your assortment or your approach. Um, and the second is really to be able to, it's also in line with, with the flexibility, but being able to move into advantage where things happen. So um, we, uh, at Party City, we were experiencing as a lot of other people were that Amazon had really slowed down shipping, um, which was a problem for people who were looking for specific event celebrations like birthdays or um, Mother's Day or something like that. Um, so stepping into that place and messaging and saying, hey, we have inventory and we can get it to you on time was a really important strategy as people went through the their assorted holidays, which graduation is another one that happened in the spring that was really important and timely for us and happened in a very different way. Um, the other piece was giving customers um, sort of ideas about how to celebrate in a different way and thinking, you know, sharing things that other customers were doing. We had a funny spike in searches for um, red carpet in, um, in the end of May. And what we realized was that customers were creating a graduation like red carpet for their kids and, and an Instagrammable event. And it caused them to be looking for something that looked like a red carpet. So we kind of quickly put together products that you could put together to make a red carpet kind of approach. Um, take a picture of your graduate at the door coming home or something like that to send out to people. So it's just a, a simple example of really paying attention in all of the channels and then pushing for us that that communication out to customers both on the homepage and email and even in SMS to say like, here's a here's a way to celebrate this if you're trying. Yeah, I think the this idea of um you know, nimbleness and flexibility, but both you and Scott mentioned, uh, and we, we heard lots of inspirational stories about that early on in the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I'd like to think that uh, that'll continue through when we're really gonna need it during the holiday season. Um, Karen, you, um, you know, talked to, uh, about, you know, all the great brands that List Track works with and you're working with them on a regular basis. You know, can you tell us about like any of the interesting, innovative, I mean, you don't have to name any companies if you don't want, um, kind of approaches to holiday that that you've seen, you know, given uh, the access that you have to so many different um, strategies are, that are being developed. Yeah, sure. I think one of my, um, you know, favorite examples is Kendra Scott. You know, they really uh, pivoted during the pandemic and were able to, uh, from a technology perspective, launch things very quickly, like buy online, pick up in store, curbside pickup. They've already started their holiday messaging in the sense that um, they're growing their mobile list. They're getting uh, engagement and signups for early access or new arrivals. Um, I really like that they're using SMS as a as a almost a loyalty channel for them. So if you sign up for their SMS program, you get a slightly better discount than, than you would uh, through email. So instead of 20% off, maybe you get 25% off. And I think, um, you know, SMS is, is such a huge uh, channel. It, it's growing exponentially. It's the only channel where uh, you know, I don't I don't get alerts in my phone when I get a new email, but I do get an alert when I get a new text message. So it's the only channel that you know kind of forces her to like pick her phone out of her her purse and and look at it. Uh, and I think that's been really successful for them, and will continue to be successful for them through the holiday season. So we'll, we'll get back to SMS in, in a second. I do want to try to uh, to weave in some of the uh, audience questions. So Mike Cumlin uh, is asking, and, and I just saw this on CNN. Home Depot is is like essentially canceling back Black Friday. Um, and uh, so there are there any you know specific deals in favor of month long deals? You know, should we be pivoting? to a broader promo period instead of traditional hyper date focused deals. So I don't know uh, for any, any, any of you on the panel, what your thoughts are on that. I'll, I'll throw in my two cents. Uh, I think the answer to that question is yes. Uh, we are seeing more of our clients uh, pivoting to more of a, a black November, so to speak. 
uh, because they do want to discourage those crowded uh, shopping environments and, you know, drive um, those customers who would normally, you know, be shopping in store and, and don't really want to take that risk online. Um, so I don't know if Scott or Liesl has any other uh, thoughts around that. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting concept and uh, something that we've we've considered. But my, my personal concern uh, would be um, bringing people back often through promotions. Holiday is a promotional time of year and giving them a reason to come back. If you have a long running promotion, um, it, my, my concern, would you, would that become more stagnant? Uh, stagnant? And so the, the thought of more frequent, uh, quicker promotions, at least in the digital space, uh, getting them to come back to the dot com a little bit quicker of a frequency. Lisa, anything you want to add, or we can move on to another topic? Yeah, um, I think I think this also goes to the the idea of really being relevant in your communications to the customers and understanding that they want um, probably nothing to do with a Black Friday wait out all night for deals. And, and, and being empathetic and thinking about what, what are they trying to do. My sense is that gifting this year is gonna be very focused on being personalized, experiential, meaningful, and that people may take more time to put things together, hopefully, to, to, and send them to people because they won't be seeing them. So then you think about a Home Depot and say, like, do you sort of space the promotions across time, like week to week to week as a countdown to Christmas where you may actually be, you know, making something handmade or you may be looking for ideas about how to decorate differently or some of those things are really being in step with where the consumer mindset is and communicating the building the promotional structure around that and seeing if that resonates with people. All right. So, so kind of switching back, uh, kind of going back to this topic of SMS um, and, you know, we're, I think we saw a, a pretty big growth in SMS marketing and, you know, driving transactions last holiday season. It seems like um, being at home is um, only uh, kind of extending, making that even more important now. So, you know, can you guys talk about, you know, what you're seeing or what your, what your expectations are, for SMS as a customer marketing channel for this holiday season. Um, Liesl, do you wanna start? And then Karen maybe shares what you're hearing or seeing with some of your clients. Sure. Um, so uh, again, at Party City, we had tremendous success with SMS last year. Um, went from having a very, very small list to doing an aggressive build of the list and really being able to use that for um, a couple of different things, probably most importantly during COVID was the ability to communicate very locally um, what was happening with people's access to products and stores um, in, a, in a very timely way. And, and that, um, you know, again, using, using it for relevant things to the customer in that moment are really important that you don't kind of abuse that as Karen said, like the one place that will get me to take it out of my purse. I, I don't want to take it out of my purse and be upset that you sent me something that wasn't really relevant. So you've got to make it really worthwhile. And it's super, um, you know, 10 to 20 times as responses, responsive as, as email. So um, really protecting the relevance of those messages and making them super timely and using them in that way is is really important, but I, I would do, you know, this year, if I were a retailer, I would do anything I could do to grow my SMS list really quickly so that I could use it for that kind of quick, um, very targeted um, messaging. Karen, anything you wanna to add to that? Uh, uh, just to uh, piggyback off of what Liesl said, I think, um, you know, we're seeing on average an SMS message is generating about 25, uh, cents for every message sent, whereas, you know, email typically generates about five cents uh, for every message sent. So it, it's a hugely productive channel. Uh, it's also a channel that, that needs to be protect, protected as well. And so where we may be sending, uh, you know, emails every day or multiple emails every day throughout the holiday season, you know, traditionally you're only sending, you know, 
now four to six SMS messages a month, maybe slightly more during the holiday season. Uh, but the content needs to be, um, you know, relevant and engaging. You can't, um, you know, so-called you know, spam <laughs> your customers on on SMS because they won't they won't tolerate that. Yeah, if we're gonna, make, please don't take the phone out of the purse. It better be worthwhile. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, the next topic is uh, one I think we'd be remiss if we didn't cover in some way, personalization and segmentation, um, you know, so important to customer marketing. Um, and Scott, I want to start with you um, and your thoughts on, you know, how you're approaching personalization and segmentation. Um, you know, is it different, the same uh, this holiday season, given all of the uh, external things that are going on right now? Yeah, uh, great question. I, I, it's it's important to us in holiday. It was also important to us uh, building up to holiday. Uh, it, it's important to understand your segments uh, and, and breaking those out. Understanding uh, the engagement for each one of them, even the promotions by by, by segment as well. Can we get them to? Uh, are there certain segments that react to a different promotion or a different event? And so uh, using the segmentations and promotions uh, and uh, utilize them to feed other channels uh, as well, whether it's, it's pushing into uh, uh, our social media channels or our Facebook channels, uh, utilizing whatever segmentation data we can and then breaking it out by uh, the, the channels that they, uh, that they find, uh, the, the customer engages with most will be key. But then having that personal message, uh, not only having a promotion that's a little bit personalized based upon their shopping behavior, but also uh, having a message, uh, being that, that uh, Karen uh, earlier mentioned that she had over 100 uh, emails in her inbox. Um, which one did she open up first? And was there a personal message that drove it? And, and uh, testing that personalized message uh, to get uh, uh, the next time I'm on a, a call, I want I want Karen to say that she opened up an Alex Nani email you know, because uh, of, of the personalization. So definitely understand that it's it's key for holiday, but also it's been key building up the holiday as well. And, and Karen, in your presentation, I I noticed I, it might have been in, in the November calendar about sending a happy Thanksgiving message to customers. And maybe you could talk about kind of like, how do you think about balancing kind of broader messages with the, the, the more personalized or the more segmented or, you know, or it, like, I, I wasn't sure if you were suggesting that would be something, you know, all customers get or just the active ones, or maybe you could share a little bit more of your thinking there. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of using your example of, you know, the Thanksgiving, uh, email. What I typically recommend is, you know, retailers send their most loyal customers, uh, most engaged uh, users of the brand, you know, a special offer. I know um, every year I'm a big anthropology fan and I'm part of their uh, perks program. And so on Thanksgiving, I get a special offer. Whereas if I'm not part of their loyalty program, I don't get that particular offer. Uh, but I still get a great message, you know, wishing me a happy Thanksgiving from the brand. So, you know, um, during the pandemic, retailers have had to focus on, you know, really um, middle and bottom of the funnel tactics, you know, top of funnel acquisition tactics. Um, you know, you know, we've had to scale back spending um, on a lot of a lot of that. And so what we're seeing now is more folks put in effort into those middle or, or bottom funnel tactics and really, um, you know, putting big uh, bear hugs around, you know, the 20 percent of customers that drive, you know, 80 percent of their, you know, 80 percent of their revenue. So use your your customer data, your engagement data um, to your advantage, adjust your triggered campaign strategies and your you know broadcast campaign strategies based on that loyalty and, and behavior. Um, yes, yeah, so another question that came in uh, from Janet Rush, who was uh, a popular attendee on our webinars. Um, how do you recommend warming up your inactive customers? What strategies have worked for um, your clients? I guess is more directed towards you, Karen, but either I'd be interested to hear from Scott and Liesl as well about uh, 
kind of getting those customers uh, kind of off off the side sidelines and in, back into the game, so to speak. Uh, well, there's two two parts of this approach. Uh, first is um, the you know it's part art, part science. The science part is really around um, inbox placement and deliverability. Uh, depending on the size of your inactive segment, you want to start off and break that into very small segments. I typically recommend, you know, less than 5,000 uh, a segment, and you're going to send messages um, to each of those small segments over a period of time until you've, um, you know, finished sending to that audience. Um, the art part of this is, is really developing subject lines and content that are going to get them to open your email. Um, and so, you know, subject lines always uh, get me, you know, Scott said, I, you know, what email does, does Karen open, open first? Uh, and it's really based on, you know, the subject line and is it a, a brand or retailer that I, you know, consistently shop with? So um, subject lines along with content and then, you know, balancing your deliverability risks are really um, important to, to warming up that that inactive segment. Yeah, I definitely, definitely support that. And uh, also something that you hit, hit on as well as uh, that brand, brand identity. Uh, you said a piece of the, the pie or a piece of that equation was, is this a brand that I want to open up an email? And uh, some of your inactives may, may have uh, forgotten about your brand and reminding them uh, of, of your brand, getting them uh, re-engaged in other channels, and, and encourage them, uh, encouraging them to get uh, to be more engaged in uh, email, SMS. And um, I just was going to bring up an, an interesting example. Lily Pulitzer just did a very interesting end of season summer sale, which they required you to log your email so that you could see the prices, and. Um, I think it's a good example of, of reaching out to people who are, are brand loyal and maybe didn't have a reason to be buying from them this summer, um, getting them sort of teed up into the holiday season and, and getting their email reactivated, getting them to click so they start to come back up in the engagement segmentation, um, looking for website browse activity and bringing that, tying that back to their email identity. So just looking for ways for the customer to self-identify that they're interested in reactivating with you again or giving them ways to ways to reasons to do it outside of a, a you know specific promotion to them, but just a really deep um, end of season sale where the access is is, is really limited um, is I think a really interesting idea. And you could do that with SMS too, require them to SMS, uh, give you the SMS to see pricing. Um, all, all good suggestions. Thank you. Um, switching gears to gifting. So I, I think, you know, Liesl brought up the, you know, how important, um, like more personalized gifting is going to be for people, especially when they can't see as many people during the holiday season due to social distancing and inability to travel and so on. Um, it, there's, I mean, there's a lot of things in, in, and we will be talking more about gifting um, later in our in our webinar um, schedule, but I wanted to touch on it today. I, I'm interested to hear, uh, you know, your thoughts on, you know, what what are you doing? Uh, you know, what are your your general gifting approaches? Is there any kind of uh, how much emphasis are you putting on some of your content to help your customers um, be more personal, be more creative with the gifts that they're giving, both the the items that they pick, the delivery of it. Um, and so on. Um, and I mean, Scott, I, I, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. It seems like Alex and Annie would be, there's a lot of people buying gifts um, for other people there versus self-gifting, but help me understand that. And, and maybe tell me, tell us a little bit about, you know, what your approach to gifting is and, and how it's different than in past years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Alex and Annie specifically, we're, we're, we're a meeting based company. And so when you think about that in the gifting uh, realm, it, it really ties in well to, uh, to the holiday season. And so uh, looking at opportunities to really, uh, one, uh, engage our current customers uh, and remind them, hey, 
We, we have a perfect gift uh, for your loved ones. Uh, also, not ignoring self-gifting as well. Uh, we, we feel like there's going to be, um, there, there might be more self-gifting uh, this, this season as well. So uh, looking at both uh, a, a meaningful, uh, meaning, meaningful way in encouraging people to, to gift for themselves as well as gift for, their, for others. And, and Karen, what are you seeing in, in terms of gifting, um, you know, email contents being created around gifting, uh, that type of thing? I mean, uh, and anything that stands out like pandemic or not, or things that um, are kind of unique to, you know, th that they're kind of leaning into what's going on in the world and, and uh, finding a way to kind of tie that into the content. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, as Lisa mentioned, more personalized gifts, you know, I've uh, received emails, um, you know, from Artifact Uprising, right, uh, already about holiday gifting, you know, you typically need longer lead times to produce to produce those more um, personalized gifts that that you want to give. Um, I've also seen um, retailers already starting to return or extend their you know, return deadlines as well, because, you know, more of us are going to be um, shipping gifts to our loved ones instead of giving them, giving it to them in person and, and not being able to see it or, or touch it in a store. Um, and, you know, I would say the, the majority of early holiday message is messaging is around finding that, you know, perfect gift, whether it, it's for yourself or for um, a loved one. Um, yeah, I think the, the returns issue is uh, one that everyone should be thinking about because uh, there's a lot of conversation about, um, you know, the, the shipping challenges, but there's probably just as much concern on, uh, especially from customers and an opportunity for upset customers on the, on the return side. So um, kind of last question before we wrap up, um, you know, the expectation that there's going to be very high volumes of traffic during the holiday season. Um, and we know that only, um, you know, conversion rates being what they are, not everybody's going to buy um, as much as you all would like them to. So uh, Karen, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, converting these visitors into future buyers. Um, I'd be interested, you know, we, we heard you talk a little bit about that. I'm interested to hear, um, Liesl and Scott, you share your point of view on, um, you know, what kind of opportunities there are. What do you think some of the things are that that retailers should be working on, especially as the holiday season is beginning to wrap up to um, to start the year off uh, as strong as you can. Liesl, do you want to um, share some of your thoughts? Sure. Um, so, so just also tagging on to this the sh the shift in terms of gifting and personalization. I think um, the, we were seeing at Party City a shift in spending into different categories for celebration. So, for instance, people aren't doing big, you know, big dinners out <laughs> or big holiday parties at their houses. So, how are they thinking about gifting those people or celebrating with people in a way that that isn't that isn't that in person, right? Do they send a small um, gift bag to everybody who they would have normally invited to their annual holiday party instead. So things like that. And, and then I think also expanding um, spend and deepening thought on a gift where you might have just done a gift card for someone, um, especially with children, where you might spend more than you would have. And what are those opportunities? Because you're not spending on the things you would normally spend on that are more experiential, like dinners out or something like that. So I think that that again, providing ideas and, and thought for people about how to think about those things differently and um, in a different way. So maybe it's a, maybe there's like a college fund or something that you establish for kids because you're you're not spending money on a big vacation this year at Disney or, um, you know, so, so really I think thinking about that kind of personalization and, um, and how to make that an experience um, that is memorable for people is really important and uh, something we should all be thinking about in terms of the packaging and the way the way that it comes. So, yeah, Scott, you, yeah. Think you had something you wanted to add? 
Yeah, my addition would be um, we 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 think that uh, people's attention spans and uh, will be limited. They're going to have a lot of noise uh, in their inbox, uh, but beyond that, uh, we we think that frustration level might be be high. We have we're we're going into a holiday season uh, right around the same time that the election is happening, and so looking at uh, at, at those pieces, we, we want to eliminate any frustration. We want to get people to the right product, present them the right price at the right time and get it to them fast. Um, and so looking at any of those potential hiccups that aren't, uh, that aren't getting your, your customers to that right product and making the checkout process simple, you know, you're trying to eliminate whatever those roadblocks might be. All right, so um, we're uh, just about to wrap up here, and I thought I would uh, kind of end on uh, you know some some words of advice from each of our panelists. Um, so, kind of like, what is the one piece of advice uh, you can offer to everyone listening uh, for the holiday season that um, has so many variables right now? Uh, uh, I won't go into all of them because we've covered a lot of them, but um, I'll start with, with Liesl. We'll go to Scott and we'll let Karen have the final word. Sure. So I think um, I would, I would go back to my really be flexible, be listening to your customer and be willing to and able to turn your message on a dime, um, you know, take products that you have and position them in a new way. And, um, you know, just really be ready to be flexible and creative. This is the medium that you can do it in. Um, and, and you're not, you know, wedded to television advertising or production. You can, you can really morph things quickly. So I think that is, that is my biggest advice. Yeah. Great. Lisa, you stole my idea. That's exactly <laughs> where I was going. Flexibility, um, be flexible, but also it, it, you, you've tested out your tools. Uh, if, if you're going into holiday still trying to figure out your, your plan and test, um, it, that was uh, June, July, August, and September. Um, it, you, you've, you've gone in, you've tested, you've prepared for holiday, you have your plan and your backup plan ready to go. Um, have confidence, go into the holiday season and, and have fun. It's going to be a fun ride. And, and Karen, I mean, in addition to downloading the Let's Track Holiday Guy, what, what, what is your one piece of advice for everybody? Oh boy, uh, well, I think um, the word of 2020, if it's not unprecedented, it's uncertain. Uh, and so as we head into fourth quarter, um, just have, have a plan, have a backup plan, um, embrace uh, your, um, what I like to call your lower, your lower cost digital marketing channels, embrace new channels like SMS and really listen to your customers and, and, um, their feedback and, and their behavior on, on your site, because that's going to guide you, um, in terms of what your strategy should be this holiday season. All right. Well, thank you all for, uh, kind of helping us wrap up with some good advice. And uh, I think there's some good good nuggets of information in there. Um, uh, we look forward to seeing everybody next week for um, e-commerce strategies to tackle holiday shipping challenges um, next Wednesday, the 23rd, and then our holiday optimization summit on Wednesday, October 7th. Um, thank you all again, Karen, Scott, Liesl, great having you. And Appreciate sharing all of your insights and experience and, and knowledge. Um, I wish everybody um, a great and um, smooth as possible uh, customer marketing during the holiday season. I hope you all can win the uh, the holiday inbox battle. Uh, you know, thanks to all of this advice that we're getting from everybody. Have a great rest of your uh, day today, and we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday.